my soccer universe. Well, one last one reviewing Euro qualifiers for September. Um, we had yesterday the last match day until October and it was groups A, B and I think it was H is the France group uh, that we will look at. Um, as I said yesterday's video the matches were not as exciting overall and I actually had a little bit of hard time choosing in the end. I said okay England Kosovo deserves the main screen. They are at least the uh, big matchup uh, one versus two although Kosovo you know, and then I said, well, Albania, Iceland, doesn't look that bad, put it on the second screen. So uh, that's how at least I started out uh, and I, it's not lost on me that the, the two Albanian teams uh, that I've been watching. And yeah, England Kosovo started out quite interestingly because um, it was a keen that made a horrible, horrible pass that Verisha uh, intercepted and uh, pulled through. Uh, to um, no, it was Berish who got the ball. Murigi uh, intercepted, put it through to Berisha, who slotted it immediately home in the first minute, one nil Kosovo. I thought, hmm, game on, game on. Yeah, but after corner kick, in had it towards Sterling, who had it into the net in the eighth minute. So okay. We have 10 minutes played, uh, two goals, nice, nice, but it was pretty clear where this was going. Took another 10 minutes, roughly, 11, um, where well, Kane got the ball uh, outside of the box and then took a shot that went through the goalkeeper's legs, make it 2-1 England. And I think there was no turning back from that. And honestly, in a way, England is toying with this group, especially at home. Uh, game was played in Southampton, which I think is basically for a spectator reason, because I think it was... Not sure if they would have managed to fill Wembley uh, against Kosovo, but probably they would have some, don't really know. But I think that's the reason why they went there. Um, but then yeah, Kosovo could keep the game tight for, for a while, but then um, one Kosovo player got injured, but the uh, game went on. Yes, there were enough players there to avoid it, but seemingly Caucasus well, seems that it needs to be stopped. Um, there comes uh, the cross in and Voivoda, you know, it went through the goal, he's standing alone in front of the goal, and if he let it go, the ball goes probably out at the sideline or some, 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 something like that, but he makes a touch on it and puts it into his own net. Uh, didn't look good, but I, I think it was just a blackout on his part. 3-1. Um, it was not enough because in stoppage time, Jaden Sancho adds two more goals. 5-1 England at the half and you had to feel the worst for Kosovo. For me, the game was all but decided, so I switched over to another uh, game. Well, we'll talk <laughs> soon in a different group. Uh, but actually, there were more goals in there. Uh, Berisha in the 49th, again, early in the game, makes it 5-2 and then they get a penalty. Berisha was kind of upset to not uh, get to take this one for a hat-trick. Now Moriki steps up and makes it 5-3. Um, then Barkley, I have to say, that was not much. I don't want to say he dove, but that was not much. Gets a penalty. Uh, but Kane, I guess there was a lot of discussion. Is the ball on the right spot, blah, blah, blah. Then uh, Kosovo players coming in. Kane steps up and it is saved. And I think there was one more chance where it hit uh, a sterling shot, hit the woodwork. And England only wins 5-3, which is almost a disappointing result. I was actually thinking, uh, shall I wear England today? Assume, yeah, 5-1, that seems good. Yeah, with that at the end, not so proud of wearing England. Let's put it that way. But yeah, uh, they are toying with this group. I have to say, this is not 10 years in qualification, they are unbeaten, and in this group I think they have put at least 4 on every opponent so far, so I mean, what's the point? Um, the Czech Republic wins in Montenegro 3-0, um, Suchek, Majopust and Darida late uh, are the scorers. I saw Montenegro has uh, new jerseys that I will have to look at. And Kosovo, by the way, those jerseys was very blue, blue camouflage pattern. Yeah, looks nice. I, I think they look nice, but it was uh, weird with the light blue socks. Uh, anyway, 
So if we look now in this group at the standings, we have of course England ahead of everyone else. The Czechs are now back in uh, second place Kosovo with nine points, only three points behind, you know, but with one game more than England, uh, Kosovo is in third and I think Montenegro and Bulgaria unfortunately are completely out of any talk. So it's between the Czechs and Kosovo. Given that the Czechs play at home to Kosovo and I would say uh, the Czechs will make that one, but you know, there's a chance for Kosovo for sure. In Group B, we had uh, the leaders, Ukraine not playing, but we had Serbia uh, play in Luxembourg, uh, hoping to bounce back from uh, the defeated home to Portugal, which in a way they did. Um, they uh, got the goal through Mitrovic, then just when uh, Luxembourg tried to get something going in the second half, Radonjic, who just came on, makes it 2-0, but Turpel in the 66th um, make May makes it a game 2-1, uh, and there was a, a, a chance where the Serbian goalkeeper had to save on the line. It could have well be 2-2, but then Mitrovic in the 78th uh, kills off the game, and it ends 3-1 for Serbia. The big game, and this, that's the one that I switched to at halftime, uh, was Lithuania-Portugal. And I didn't expect it because I thought this will be a carnage. But, you know, despite Portugal getting a hands penalty early on that Ronaldo converted, uh, Lithuania did not roll by the wayside and in and even got the equalizer uh, of a corner. And now I will butcher that name. Uh, Andrius Kevicius makes it 1-1 at the half. And when I saw that, I said, oh, we got to watch this one. Well, second half, it was all Portugal 2-2, two, two, to be honest. But they had a hard time breaking down the Lithuanian defense. And it took, in the 60th, a shot, uh, 61st, a shot from Ronaldo that bounced, bounced, bounced. The goalkeeper, and it bounced right ahead, ahead of the goalkeeper. So he touched it with his hand and it went high and all off his shoulder and into the net. It was a very weird goal. Um, some discussion, they gave it to Ronaldo in the end, but I think there could be some uh, case made that this was an own goal. Then Ronaldo adds a third in the 65th and even a fourth in the 76th, so the game was uh, done and dusted by that point. Um, and I then I kept the game on, but I focused on, on another one. William Carvalho in stoppage time makes it even 5 on, so it gets to the route that uh, was initially expected, but... On the, honestly, it was anything but easy. If you look at the group now, uh, Ukraine clear leaders 13, Portugal 8 uh, is at a safe second spot, I, I would say, with one game less. Serbia 7 will have a hard time, they definitely will need to win against Ukraine uh, to have any uh, chance. Luxembourg 4 and Lithuania 1 are just barely hanging in there, I would say. So it's between the three that we always knew that this is a really tight group. I think it's a definite advantage, Ukraine and Portugal. And then we'll go to Group H, where um, there were two games that were pretty clear. Moldova against Turkey and France against Andorra. Uh, Moldova, Turkey. Yeah, uh, it was weird to see Moldova in blue, to be honest, for some reason. I never know. I think they once played in yellow, they once played in red, and then now they play in blue. They they make fair use of all their national team colors. And if you saw my jersey review on the Nations League, uh, they're actually not that bad looking jerseys, to be honest. Well, it was the Tosun Zhou who gets in the 37th the 1 0, and then uh, Turis um, makes it uh, in the 57th 2 0. Tosun then adds another one in the 79th. I think that was the one where the goalkeeper didn't come out um, fast, fast enough. So Tosun gets first on the ball, lobs it over him, and then slots in the net. And Yasichi in the 88th makes it 4 0. Turkey. Uh, France against Andorra, a little bit of disappointing score, and only 3 0. Coman breaks it down in the 18th, and Langley in the 52nd, and Ben Yeda in stoppage time. But it has to be said that uh, Griezmann again missed the penalty. Uh, I think this did, the it is almost safe, and there were enough chances. But you know, France is also, I have the feeling it's not necessarily a motivation prompt, although it might be, because um, they are switching through. But then France, they're just trying to have fun and not uh, give it all to the competition. Not sure how this will end up. I'm getting to the point where I can see France, uh, despite all the talent, I can see France exiting early. 
uh, at the next World Cup and continue the streak of the European champions exiting at the group stage. But the big game for sure was Albania versus Iceland and that was the one that in the end I knew this is the one really tight matchup. It was also a last chance for Albania and yeah, it was a good match to be honest. Well. I mean yes I watched more England and a little bit more Portugal but I kept on the second screen and then at the end I was really stuck at that screen. Um, Albania hit the woodwork early on. Uh, Der uh, Marco in the 32nd made it 1-0 after corner. The first half was really largely Albania do do dominating. I thought the jersey matchup was a little bit weird because Albania played their usual uh, red with black but Iceland played with blue and then uh, white on the bottom which is a look that I have not seen in in a while I think. The play in all white, although that was the goalkeeper, that should have worked fine. Anyway, um, right after half, Gilfi Sigurdsson makes it 1-1. Uh, it was not lasting long because uh, Hisei had made a wonderful plate um, com 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 combination, suddenly clear on goal and uh, makes it 2-1 for Albania, but then Sig Thorsen, who just came on, uh, just six minutes later, makes it 2-2. So really uh, tight sequence right after the half where there were three goals scored and the game was wide open at that point. Um, and in, in the end, it was a deflected shot uh, from Roshi. I think it was uh, Bjarnason who... Um, yeah, I think it was Arnason, Arnason who uh, deflected it into net again bordering an on goal that makes it 3-2 for Albania and then uh, Iceland need, need, needed to risk and just a few uh, minutes later Chikaleshi makes it 4-2 and that's the game but uh, that game was a thriller for the most time it was a really great game especially early on in the second half uh, you couldn't take your eyes off it but it was also a big blow for Iceland's hope of qual qualifying I have to say if you look at the table we have Turkey and France at 15 points uh, each Turkey holding the head-to-head -head for now because they won against France at home. Iceland now only 12 points, uh, Albania 9. Uh, Moldova and Andorra we don't need to um, worry about too much but in the next round uh, we have that um, um, Iceland is playing at home to France and that might be a big big match where they honestly will need a win. So uh, in a way and then uh, I think they play to uh, they have to still play Turkey away from home uh, Iceland at home has been flawless so far away from home mm, not so much not so much so um, at the moment I would give it actually to France and Turkey uh, thanks to that loss to Albania Albania is also still in there and they although they lost early to Turkey they now play in Turkey in the next round and maybe there's another twist in the tail maybe it will be even get tighter at the top. So that were the European qualifiers for September 2019. More to come as at, at least one exciting match that kept me and I was even thinking of not watching but I was happy that I was watching European champions also steadying the chip. So yeah we'll see where, where it goes. I will do one last kind of looking at how the standings are and how what this means for the playoffs the, where the Nations League plays in. I think that warrants another video this you will get tomorrow. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.